Hello, 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 and thank you for tuning on to another episode of our Scripture Breakdown Ministry. My name is David Abraham, and our scripture for today comes from Ephesians 2, verses 1 and 2. And it reads, And you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience. I repeat, and now, and you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the cause of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience. Now, I want to divide the scripture into four parts. And the first part says, And you he made alive, who were, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now, before we go ahead, I'd like to say this was Apostle Paul, who is the author of the epistle to the Ephesians. Now, Apostle Paul wrote um, the, this epistle after the death of Christ and he wrote it to the Ephesians in Ephesus. Now, Ephesus was uh, like a major trade center at that time in the west of Turkey, in the Asian Manor area. It was, a, it was a town which was very receptive to the things of God and they accepted the, the doctrines and the teachings of Jesus Christ. There were a lot of Christians in Ephesus at that time. So here he says, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses. Now, Apostle Paul was referring to the Eph to Ephesians at that time, but on a whole, referring to every reader, be the believer, a non-believer, and everybody at this present age. So, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. Now to further buttress it, he was referring primarily to those who understood the, the death and resurrection of Christ. Now those are those that are able to interpret what he was trying to, the message he was trying to relate. He said, and, and you he made alive. And you he made alive. And you the efficient you the believers he made alive so when Christ died he made us alive that is um, when Christ died the, our sins were forgiven now um, because the the world was in the brink of um, the, the world was in the brink of condemnation the world was in a state of condemnation at the time Christ came. So Christ took upon that condemnation, that sin, that, that, um, the, that wages of sin, which was death, and took upon it on himself and exchanged it for his innocence, for the, for, for the innocence of his, his life. He had life which was gotten from his immaculacy. So he exchanged that that life for he exchanged that that his life for death. Took upon the sins of the world, the wages of sin is death. He took upon the sins of the world and gave the world life. So, so and you he made alive. That is by taking the sins of the world, our sins, and giving life. So he made us alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins because the wages of sin is death and therefore because the world was sinful the world was already condemned the world was sinful the world had, had trespassed on the thing on the, on the rules set by god the world had sinned and therefore the wages was death so christ gave us life 
took upon himself death. Then the, the, the second one says, in which you once walked according to the cause of this world, and you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses, in which you once walked according to the cause of this world. So the trespasses which um, we were once dead in was according to the cause of this world. Now what is the cause of this world, which is a key word. The cause of this world is the directions of this world, the dictates of the Babylonian system, the, 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 the way the system, the worldly system operates. Now the worldly system is, is, um, is operated and manipulated by the evil ones to be, so that things do not necessarily go according to the will of God. Now, the, 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 the plan of the enemy is to deviate the world from the will of our Father in heaven. So, in which you once walked according to the cause of this world, according to the directions of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Now, that is the chief manip manipulator, the chief orchest orchestrator of the doings, the Babylonian system, and trying to um, deviate everybody and divert everybody and, and um, deceive everybody away from the will of the Creator, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Now, the Prince and the Power of the Air was also discussed in, 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 the, in the New Testament and re relatively. The, the, called the Prince of Persia. Now that is Satan. So he is the Prince and the power of the air. Then the, the last bit says, the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience. The spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience. Now the sons of disobedience are the sons of the devil. The sons of disobedience the sons of the devil. Now, who are the sons of disobedience? Now, it, it, it doesn't matter whether is a, um, is a male or a female. They all are categorized under that sonship. Um, or and or their daughters, but they all cat they are they are females, or they are all categorized under that sonship. Just like how sometimes we make reference and we say mankind, mankind is also involves females as well so he said spirits who walk in the sons of disobedience that's the people of disobedience now who are the people of disobedience the people of disobedience are those that have not heard from god those that do not walk according to the to the precepts the status of god those who have not given their lives to christ those who do not walk under the sonship of the person of god those who do not follow after the doctrines of God, those who do not follow after the precepts of God, those who do not follow after, and those who do not acknowledge the person of God, but primarily the sons of disobedience are those who do not live under the will of God. Because when you are a son of obedience, that means you are constantly, first and foremost, you are living under the will of God, and you are constantly obeying the, the word, obeying the word and obeying the things of God and constantly um, following after the doctrines and the teachings of God and therefore you are categorized automatically as the son of obedience because you are constantly in obedience to the voice of God, in obedience to the word of God in obedience to the precepts of God, in obedience to the status of God, in obedience to, to, the, to the voice of the, of, of the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and you constantly walk with the dictates of the Holy Spirit. You constantly uh, live living in the will of God. Because when you live in the will of God, the, the primarily aim of living in the will of God is because you, you want to move forward in any endeavor that is associated with the will of God for your life. You want to move forward. And because you want to move forward, you need to heed to instructions because 
through instructions which you heed to and through directions which are imparted in your spirit, you are able to learn to move forward. And through the word of God, which you meditate on and you read on and you plug into your everyday living, you are surging forward. And therefore, through by surging forward, you are automatically categorized as the son of obedience. And God looks at you as his justified one. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. God looks at them, looks at, looks at you as a faithful servant who lives um, according to his, his, his dictates, according to his voice, according to his instructions. And you are obedient to everything, every instruction he gives you in line with your destiny, in line with the will of God for your life. Because you understand that you know that the thoughts what things of you are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end to give you hope so because of that you continue to thread in that hope because of that you continue to listen to the things of god listen to the voice of god that he may be able to take you to where he wants you to be which is which is definitely a good place a place of delightfulness a place of gladness, a place of fulfillment where you have fulfilled your God-given destiny. So the, the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience. Now we now understand what the who the sons of disobedience are. The sons of disobedience, primarily in a nutshell, are those who do not obey God, those who are not living under the will of God for their life. Those are primarily the sons of disobedience. Now I want to pray that God is able to expand our minds on this word, that God is able to give us more revelational knowledge on this word, that we will be able to walk with it and run with it, that ultimately God gives us the grace to continually search for Him, give us the grace to continually heed to his voice, give us the grace to continue and follow after his instructions so that he's able to take us by his grace to that good place where he wants us to be. All is at ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank you so much for listening. God bless. God bless in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.